I always used to think that life was like a process of like finding yourself, but I've really found that life is more about creating who you want to be. When I think back to when I was like a teenager, I was just very, very naturally shy, not very confident. And I think if I could have created the person I want to be, it would be the person that I am now. And I had to go through certain experiences to be that person. I think she's very empowering for other women. She's educating people so strongly, and she's the only person that I've seen in the industry actually do it in the way she does it, and I think it's so freaking powerful she doesn't even realise. My name's Sophie Butler, and I'm a Gymshark athlete and an um, online social media influencer and also a disability rights advocate. Being an influencer is something that I kind of naturally fell into because of that I was sort of sharing my experiences online and through social media. It's not something that I intentionally sort of sought out as a job. Um, and I think as I really sort of grew into it and became more aware of my influence, as, as you wish, I thought with that came the, that the responsibility that comes with that. So that's where I fell into the advocacy stuff. So it's things that I was already talking about because it was my personal experience, but they kind of became this point where I realized is that, oh, I actually can influence people and in the way that they think, and that's a really powerful thing. And it's something that I really sat on for a bit, and I kind of had to really think, well, what are you gonna, what are you gonna do with this influence and use it in a in a right way, in a responsible way? And then it kind of just naturally became that I was advocating for disability rights and talking about different subjects. And I think it's more a case of, like I said, them intertwining with each other. The more that I'm um, growing in my responsibility as an advocate, that's really going to impact my influence, like my influence at work and what I do there. But then also it influences my um, work as a trainer, as a coach, because then I'm going to be a better coach. I'm going to have that better connection with people as well. It was just an instant, very, very friendly connection. We have a lot in common in terms of we're here to educate people, we're here to help women. Obviously, we're here to help everyone, but I predominantly work with women and so does Soph. And even though we probably educate people in different ways, we have different topics and subjects we talk about, we instantly gelled because we have the same vision. I, I know that I'm doing good work. So I think because I've seen the impact of what I'm doing and I know that I've had a good impact on people and I know that I've done good things and putting out good work, that's kind of really secured my confidence in myself and what I'm doing. And it kind of really makes me more secure in where I should be going to the future. I know particularly when I've been through things in the past, like when I had like a really bad experience a couple of months ago on social media, Lucy Davis was there to kind of be like, I've got this. I was very frustrated. There was a lot of comments um, and it was on obviously Gymshark's page and it was this gorgeous photo of, of Soph and I was on the photo making a comment and I saw a negative comment come through and I was having a bit of a scroll and there was quite a few and she'd messed me being like, have you seen the Gymshark post? I went in pretty damn hard because I was like, you can't, you can't see anyone like that, let alone my best friend, like don't even go there. You don't even have to ask, it's like she's there like that and like she's ready to sort of fight your corner, which I think is naturally very good. And I think there are a lot of situations like not in just social media, but in friendships and work groups in the wider world where people wouldn't want to do that. It's one of those things where we kind of chose to put ourselves out there as public figures, but we should never get some of the hate and the negativity that we do receive. There are so many amazing people, uh, disabled people in the fitness space before I was, but they're more in the Paralympics um, space and you don't really see them in the mainstream and definitely you didn't really see them in the Gymshark space. So I think for me, becoming the first disabled Gymshark athlete was really kind of like a moment where I was like, oh, okay, like we can create change here. And you know, just because you are the first, you should not be the last and you should be opening up these spaces and making it more accessible for people to come after you. Getting to work with being on the athlete team with so many other amazing women as well is really important. And I remember scrolling through Instagram and looking at all of these, the Gymshark athletes of the time and different fitness influencers and just getting really, really frustrated because obviously I was going through a lot emotionally and physically and I was scrolling through and thinking like, I don't fit in that here anymore. I think before my injury, my training was very focused on, I mean, I've, I've always done like weightlifting. Um, so I think I was still focused on strength before my injury, but it was very aesthetics focused. Now I'm very much training for functionality 
thinking, how can I use the strength? Thinking about how I move with my chair and getting in and out of my car, picking up my chair to get into the car and all these things that I do in the way that I move my body and how do I actually need to use my strength in my body and that's kind of how I've adapted my training. It's just amazing because she's so strong. She's hit some like amazing PBs when we've trained together. So it's like a proper hype session. We just enjoy it. We just laugh and that's what training is supposed to be. You are supposed to enjoy it. It's not always serious. Fitness isn't an image, it isn't a body type, it isn't this, it isn't that. I can't stand it when someone kind of pin, pinpoints it as a thing. You don't look in the dictionary and say, it is this body type, it's not. Fitness is what you make it. It's so much more important to not just focus on aesthetics. I think everyone goes through that stage. They all do it, I've been there. I solely focus on aesthetics and maybe have an eating disorder for two or three years of my life because you become so involved with that reflection in the mirror it wears you down. But if you don't actually know why you're doing it in the first place, whether it's a sport, whether it is going to the gym, whether it's just going on walks, whatever you do as a, a fitness kind of thing, you have to have a stronger reason behind that than just, I want to look great. I kind of had this moment where I looked through all of the decades and realised the most beautiful woman of each decade was so different from each other. And I thought, well, this decade it's Kim Kardashian and everyone's trying to look like Kim Kardashian. What's it gonna be next decade? And I'm not gonna exhaust myself changing my body to fit a standard that I didn't even create. I think really it's just waking up a lot of brands and saying, look, disabled people are here and we have a lot of talent, a lot of creativity and we have a lot to offer and you need to start utilizing that. There's so many stereotypes that disabled people fit into. So it's kind of either like, you're bitter and you're a martyr or you're like an inspiration and it's kind of like I don't want to fall into any of them I'm just a human having different experiences at different points in my life I think I just want to live a good life just because I deserve to 